watching Rob's video about Pythagoras got me thinking about maths and got me thinking about primes, which is something I'm really fascinated with. Primes are very, very curious little buggers. Because <laughs> they, um, they, there's an infinite sequence of them. But if you look at the nth one, nobody knows what the next one's going to be. So if you plot them on a graph, they'll produce what looks like a random graph. They're very, very weird. They look unordered. But in fact, they're the heart of many things. They're in fact very ordered. They must be ordered. So this is, they're very curious things. And uh, what I want to uh, show today is that primes are actually involved in all natural numbers. Natural numbers are whole numbers. So like 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, 1,768, your grandmother's birthday, you know, I don't know, whatever you like. Any whole number, primes are involved. This is because any natural number greater than is either prime or it's a product of prime. So primes are involved in every number, which is interesting to me. I think it's, I think it's weird and it's interesting. So just to give you a quick refresher, so prime is a number that has precisely two factors, itself and one. So it's only divisible by itself and divisible by one. Anything that has more than those two factors is not a prime. So one is not a prime because it doesn't have two factors, it only has one. It's divisible by one, which is itself, so it doesn't have exactly two factors, two different factors. So the primes start from two in the natural numbers. And two is a prime, three is a prime, five is a prime, seven is a prime, eleven is a prime, thirteen is a prime, seventeen is a prime, and so on. Now, what do we mean by the product of primes? Let's just go through the numbers and have a look if our claim holds. You know, we want to. I'm saying that every natural number greater than one is either prime or can be expressed as a product of prime. So let's just have a look. Is it true? So 2 is a prime. 3 is a prime. 4 is not a prime, but it can be expressed as a product of prime. So 2 by 2. 5 is a prime. Cool. 6 is not a prime, but again, it can be expressed as a product of prime. So 2 by 3. 7 is a prime. Cool. 8 is not a prime, but it can be expressed as a product of prime. So 2 by 2 by 2. So, okay, I've shown it's true for the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 natural numbers greater than 1, but I'm saying it's true for all natural numbers greater than 1. Obviously, I can't stand here for all eternity making this video and go up and go through all the numbers. I'd never finish. So we need a way to say that it's true for all numbers. So how to do that? Well, wouldn't it be nice, because we know it's true for these first few numbers, what about if I could say, oh, if I know it's true for these first few numbers, then it's true for the next number. Because if I could do that, then I could say, oh right, I now know it's true for these. And make my set a bit bigger and say, if it's true for this set of numbers, then it's true for the next number. If I can always do that, if I can always make that claim, if it's true for this set of numbers, then it's true for the next number, then you can see that this set will just expand and fill up all of the natural numbers. Now, I don't want to talk about specific numbers because it's difficult to kind of make that reasoning if you talk about specific numbers. So I want to talk about indexed numbers. Just give them labels instead because it's easier to reason about. So I'm going to label the, the natural numbers start using the number Q, starting with Q1, Q2, Q3, all the way up to Qn. Now, and... Now we can ask the question, if it's true for the first n numbers, and it doesn't matter what n is, n could be anything, we, get, like, we can choose it to be the sick, the sick natural number if we want, but it doesn't matter. What we, all we need to ask is, if it's true for the first n numbers, is it then true for the n plus 1 number? Because if we can show that, we can show it's true for all of them, as I'll show you. So all right, well, let's have a look. So, let's assume that the claim holds for all these numbers then. So, it's true for all these numbers. So, each of these numbers is either a prime or can be expressed as a product of prime. We'll assume that's true. Now, can we show that this is either prime or expressible as a product of primes? Well, if it's a prime, then our job's done. It's a prime. So, then if it's not a prime, in order to meet our claim, it must be expressible as a product of primes. Is there any information in here that can let us show this? 
then this number is expressible as a product of primes. Well, it turns out that there is. So if this is true, because this is not a prime, it must have factors. And if it has factors, those factors must be less than this number, because that's what, what it means to have factors. You know, the, the comp components of something are smaller than the whole. So these numbers, they must come from this set. So they must come from the, the numbers 1 to n, because they're smaller. And we, this encompasses all the numbers, all of the natural numbers from the first up to the n. So that means that the factors of this number come from this set. But we assume that this set, that each number in this set is either a prime or expressible as a product of primes, which means that the factors of this number are either prime themselves or expressible as a product of primes. So if we write all these out, so let's just assume that the factors are a, b, a times b times c for this number, then either, each of these is either a prime or expressible as a product of primes. Now, if, it's a, if they're primes, then they're okay. So let's assume that a and c are primes, and b is expressible as a product of primes. Well, then that means we can write b as, let's say, f times g, and let f and g be primes. So that means that we can write our number out as a product of primes, because each of the each of the numbers that was itself a product of primes can be expanded into a product of primes, and we can put them all in, in a line, which means that qn plus 1 can be expressed as a product of primes. Therefore, if it's true that number, the natural numbers greater than 1, q1 up to qn, are either prime or expressible of, as a product of primes, then it is true that the ne next number, qn plus 1, is either prime or expressible as a product of primes. So we're almost there now. We only need one more step to show that the, the claim is true for all numbers. And basically, the, all we need to show, which we've already done, is that it's true for this set. We know 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime, 4 is expressible as a product of primes, 2, plus two, two times 2, and 5 is a prime. And we just set our qn minus 1 to be here. So we know that our set... Um, we know it's true for this set. We prove that if it's true for this, it's true for qn. Sorry, that's n, qn. qn plus 1. So we know it's true for the next number. And in this case, the next number is 6. Then we can just define qn to be this, this number. And then we know it's true for the next number. So we've now shown. So what we do when we finish this, we, type, we write qed. We've shown now that every natural number greater than 1 is either prime or expressible as a product of primes. Now, I think Rob's going to do a video about inductive reasoning in general to kind of generalize this principle. But essentially, what we're doing here is showing that something's true for a smaller set, then showing that if it's true for that set, it's, tr it's true for a slightly larger set, and we can always keep redefining the set to be the next set up. I hope that makes sense, and I hope you found that useful. And I hope you learned something about primes. Thanks for listening.